What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I'm gonna to answer the question I get asked the most, how do I bring my Cinema 4D projects into Unreal Engine? Well, I'm gonna show you right now. For those that don't know me, my name is Jonathan Wimbush, a multi-award winning motion graphics artist based out of Southern California. I've worked with places like DC, Marvel, and Warner Brothers to name a few, but most of you guys know me from my YouTube channel where I teach my tips and tricks from working in the industry. Today, we're gonna to look at how we can export our Cinema 4D projects, bring them into Unreal, and not only that, I'm gonna show you guys how we can get that red shift look inside of Unreal Engine. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. And if you wanna follow along with this tutorial, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you download the Cineware plugin for Unreal. This is brand new through the Maxon website. With this, you're gonna be able to install stuff like cameras, materials, lights, and animations. So make sure you go to maxon.net and you install this plugin. It's called Cineware for Unreal Engine. And on top of making sure you have the brand new plugin, if you wanna follow along, make sure you download the project files using the link in the description below. And for those of you that are wondering what we're gonna be creating today, this is the actual final result that is rendered out of Unreal Engine. So if you guys are ready to build something like this, let's get right into it. And as you can see right now, I'm inside of Cinema 4D. This is the latest version, 2023. This is actually the project file EJ has sent over. So if I play it through, you can see we have this nice cloth simulation playing here. We have this cylinder kind of colliding with the cloth. We have some effectors in here as well, some turbulence, and it's looking really nice, right? Like you see, it's nicely flowing in here. And the big concern was he had built this out with Redshift, but we want to bring it over to Unreal Engine. So the first step from here is I'm actually going to take this cloth deformer right here, and I'm going to take these three planes that he has inside of a null here, and I'm going to bring these out. And this is because Unreal Engine doesn't like for for this to be in the null it likes for it to be in its own separate layers and so i'm just going to hold down the control key on my keyboard while i'm left clicking and i'm just making duplicates here and i can actually get rid of these redshift tags because we can't bring redshift over to unreal anyway so from here i'm actually going to take this cloth right here this little plane i'm going to drag it under the cloth service right here i'm going to take this one right here drag it under the second one then i'm going to take the third one here i'm going to drag it under this one here so each cloth surface has its own individual plane. And then I'm gonna come back over here where we have our cloth tag. And I'm actually just gonna select all three of these. And I'm gonna come down here to cache and I'm actually gonna clear my cache because I'm just gonna start over a whole new simulation here. So I'm just gonna click on cache scene and I'm gonna let this ready out. As right now you can see it's at 0% and I'm just gonna wait for this to finish out. Now our simulation is finished. I'm just gonna play it again back one more time. And we can see it's as elegant as it was before, but I just like doing a fresh simulation, especially when I do something like this, just to make sure everything is on the up and up. So the next step from here, I'm actually gonna come over here to create, and I'm gonna make a null, and I'm actually gonna name this one null underscore position, because I wanna make sure I have my exact position of my cloth sim right here. So I'm just gonna actually drag it right here under cloth surface, and I'm gonna come down here to coordinates, and I'm gonna zero everything out. So my X, Y, Z, and my rotation is all zeroed out. And now I can bring it from underneath my cloth surface right there. And we have the same exact coordinates for my null position and my cloth surface. And this is just so when I bring my limbic file over to Unreal Engine, I have this as a positional reminder of where everything should be. So now that we have our cloth sim simulated, I'm actually just gonna select everything here, these six pieces, and then I'm gonna make sure I'm on my first frame. I'm gonna come over here to file. And I'm gonna come down here to export. And I'm gonna come down here to Alembic ABC. And I'm gonna click on the gear right here. And in the export settings, I'm gonna make sure I have selection only selected because the way that I like to work is make sure that I'm only exporting the stuff that I have selected there. And then another caveat is for animation, where it says start frame, you wanna make sure you're on start frame one. You don't wanna have it on zero because Unreal gets kind of confused when you have it at zero. And so we wanna make sure we're at one and everything else is good to go. So I'm just gonna click okay. And now I'm just gonna save my file here. So I'm just gonna name this one cloth and click on save. And I'm just gonna wait for this Alembic file to export out. So now that we're done exporting that, I'm just gonna delete my cloth sim right here like so, but I'm gonna keep my null right here. Now, a couple of things that we don't need, we don't need the turbulence and the rotation and all this stuff here because we already did our cloth sim, so we don't need that. But the one thing that we're gonna bring over, we're gonna bring over all these items right here over to Unreal Engine. Now, there's a couple of things that we can bring over from Cinema 4D to Unreal Engine, such as materials, lights, and cameras, 
But for this right here, he's using Redshift lighting in which that's not gonna work in Unreal Engine. And for me personally, I like using the lights all inside of Unreal because they're native and they're gonna give us the full potential power of lumen and ray tracing. So with that being said, what I'm actually gonna do right here, you can see we have our Redshift lights for a key background and fill. I'm just gonna come over and I'm just gonna actually make nulls for each one of these. So I'm just gonna hold down control, left click and drag. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use these to give us the position of these lights inside of Unreal. So I'm just gonna come down here. I'm gonna zero everything out for my X, Y, and Z and rotation on each one of these lights right here. And everything should be good. And I'm also gonna rename these as well. So I'm just gonna zero everything out. And then right here under key, I'm gonna name that one key. I'm gonna name this one background and I'm gonna name this one fill. Now, once I have these nulls as my positional data here, I'm just gonna actually select all three of these. I'm just gonna drag them out and then I'm gonna come back over here to my lights and I'm gonna delete these as well. And then I'm gonna delete this target here because we don't particularly need it. And then what we're gonna do from here is I'm actually gonna get this camera set up to bring over to Unreal. But first, what I'm gonna do is come right here under render settings. I'm gonna make sure I'm under standard because we can't bring Redshift stuff over. And since I can't convert this camera over to a standard camera, I'm just gonna create a standard camera like so. And then down here under the attributes window, I'm just gonna select all my positional data down here. I'm gonna right click animation copy track and I'm going to come up to my camera and I'm going to paste that track in there and that should give us the exact keyframes that we need. So if I actually look through my camera, there we go. We have the same exact position going, but we don't have the focal length in which this one's at 42 millimeters for the focal length. And so I'm just going to come back over here and I'm going to change my focal length right here to 42 instead of 35. Now our camera should match exactly as we should have it. So now that we have our standard camera, I'm going to delete this redshift camera then I could look through this camera right here. And same thing for my cylinder. I'm actually gonna delete this redshift tag. I'm gonna delete this redshift material and I'm gonna delete this collider tag. And then everything that's underneath here, I'm gonna delete these as well. So now we have a pretty basic scene set up here. I have my cylinder, I have my camera and I have my positional nose right here. So now that we have our standard scene set up, I'm actually gonna hit Control D on my keyboard down here in my project settings. I'm gonna come down here to Cineware and I'm gonna save Polygon Cache and then I'm gonna save Animation Cache. And I'm gonna leave materials off because I'm gonna do all my materials inside of Unreal Engine. So what I'm gonna do is come over here to File, Save Project As, and I'm just gonna save this one as its own separate file. So I'm just gonna actually name this one Unreal Project underscore UE. So I know this file that I have here, I don't wanna save over my original, but this is just gonna be your standard Cinema 4D file. So I'm gonna save this and then I'm gonna get Unreal Engine booted up here to import this in. Now this is Unreal Engine 5.1. And if you're not familiar with it, if it's your first time seeing it, make sure you check out my course on School of Motion where I show you how to get acclimated with everything here. But the first thing I'm gonna do is actually come over to my outliner here on the right hand side. And I'm gonna start by deleting some of this stuff in here, like the player start, the sky sphere and et cetera. So I'm just gonna leave these three things in here. And I'm actually gonna make a folder I'm just gonna name it FX and I'm just gonna drop these things in here and then I'm gonna import the Cinema 4D project file. So I'm gonna come up here to this little plus sign, come down here to Datasmith, I'm gonna come down here to file import and then I'm gonna look for my project file, my Cinema 4D file that I just saved out. I'm just gonna actually open this and it's gonna come up with this window right here. I'm gonna drop it in my content folder. I'm gonna click OK and that's gonna bring up the Datasmith import options in which I'm just gonna leave everything on at default. Then I'm gonna click import here and watch everything just import into my scene. And once that's imported, you can see that it made a project folder here for us. This named the same thing as our Cinema 4D file. You can see we actually have the Cinema 4D logo here. We have a folder for our geometry, which we have all right here. And then we also have our animation timeline that was brought over as well. So if I double click on this one, it's gonna bring up our timeline in which an Unreal Engine is called Sequencer. And I'm just gonna save this here. But if I actually look through my camera here, you can see that it's completely pitch black. And that's because the exposure kind of gets messed up when it's brought over from Cinema 4D. It's an easy fix. I'm just gonna come down here to search. I'm gonna type in EX just for my exposure. And right here where it says exposure metering mode, I'm gonna actually click this off. And now we can see everything through our camera. And so if I play this through, you can still see we're at 24 frames per second. I brought that over from Cinema 4D and we have our full animation with our cylinder and our camera. Now the one thing we are missing is our Olympic file in which if I come down here to my content drawer and I'm actually gonna dock this into my layout so it's always there. 
So I'm going to hit dock and layout. Now I have my content folder here. I'm actually going to come over, right click, make a new folder. I'm just going to name this one ABC. And I'm just going to drag and drop my limbic file right into here. And once I do that, you see that it comes up with this little window right here, the import options. I'm going to make sure everything's selected right here. For my import type, I'm going to come down here, geometry cache. For my frame start, I want to make sure it's at zero, even though we exported it at one. We want to make sure we import it at zero here. And then if I scroll further down here, we have recompute normals. I'm going to click this one on, but ignore triangles. I'm going to click this one off. Now, the last thing we want to make sure we do inside of our conversion here is set up for Autodesk Maya. I found I had better luck when I do 3D Max. And then I'm just going to hit import and wait for everything to import into our content browser. And once it's done importing, you can actually see it right here. And I can actually just left click and drag it into my scene in which we see it right here. And if I come over here to my outliner, I'm just going to click and drag it underneath my position. And then I'm just going to zero it out. So if I come down here in my details panel under transform, I'm actually just going to zero everything out. Now everything is properly aligned. But if I come to sequencer and play, it's not working. So what I'm going to do is actually take my cloth and I'm just going to come over here, drag it back out because I already have the position now and I'm going to left click and drag it into my sequencer. And now we can see the layer is down here. And I'm going to make sure I'm on the very first frame and I'm going to click on track here. And then right here where it says geometry cache, I'm going to click this on and now I should play back inside of our viewport in which if we look at it, everything is playing back nicely and elegantly and everything looks really good here. So if I go back now, I'm actually going to do one more thing to my camera. I'm going to disable the depth of field because I want everything to come in sharp. So with my camera selected, I'm going to come down here under my lens settings right here under focus setting. And for focus method, I'm going to disable it. Now everything should be super sharp. Now, the next thing I want to do from here, I'm going to bring in some textures for mega scans. So if I come up here where we had a plus symbol, I'm going to open up Quixel bridge. And for anybody that's not familiar, Quixel Bridge is where we're going to have access to the Megascans library. So I have some stuff already downloaded. If I click on this little icon here, you can see I have all the stuff downloaded that's on my hard drive here. But what I'm going to look for is I'm going to look for some cloth and then we're going to look for some metal. So I have this metal still right here. I'm just going to actually left click on this. I'm going to come down here to high quality because I already have this downloaded. And then I'm just going to click on add and it should add it to my project file, which you could just see. It made a mega scans folder and we have our metal material right here. Now I'm going to look for my cloth as well. So I'm going to scroll down till I find this dark fabric. I'm going to take this same thing, high quality, and I'm just going to add it. And now we can see it's over here inside of our content browser. So that's all I'm going to need from Quixel bridge. And so I'm just going to exit this out and then I'm just going to left click, drag this onto my cylinder. And then I'm going to come over here to fabric. I'm going to left click, bring it onto my cloth. And then if I scrub this through on my timeline, you can see now everything is on there and everything is looking good. Now, the next thing I want to tackle might be the lighting. So I'm actually going to pop out of my camera here by hitting the eject button like so. And you can see I have my camera selected in my outliner and that's going to bring up our preview window right here. But if I click off of it, then it's actually going to disappear. So if I want to have this preview window always here, there's a little pin button right here. If I click on this, now if I click outside of it, it's always going to be there. And that's going to help me always look through my camera as I'm navigating through my viewport. So what I'm going to do is actually bring in some lights from Unreal Engine. I'm going to click on the plus button, come down here to lights, and I'm just going to use rectangular lights. So I'm going to take this one and then I'm going to drag it underneath the nose that I have here. So the first one is going to be the background right here. So I'm going to bring it under here. Then I'm going to come down to my details panel and I'm just going to zero everything out. So now you can see that null that we brought over from Cinema 4D is actually giving us the position that we could put our light in here in which it's going to be up top here. I'm going to do the same thing for my other lights here. So I'm actually just going to right click and I'm going to come down here to edit. I'm going to duplicate and then I'm just going to drag this under fill. Same thing. I'm going to zero everything out in here. So now this is going to be underneath that fill null right here, which is down here at the bottom. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the key light in which I'm going to right click, come down to edit, duplicate, bring it under key. After I come down here and I just zero everything out. So if I double click on this again, and now we can see it's in a position that it needs to be into. And if I just scrub through here and you can see all the lighting is happening real time instead of my camera view. But this background right here should have a material on it, which I believe was gray. So I'm just going to come back over here in my content browser. I'm going to right click make a new material. 
And I'm just going to name this one gray. And then I'm going to double click on this. And that's going to bring up our material note system right here. So what I'm going to do is actually hold down the shortcut key three on my keyboard. I'm going to left click and that's going to bring up this RGB node in which I could just put that under my base color. And then if I double click on this black box right here, I can actually just change this to gray like so. Then I'm going to click OK and I could probably make it a little bit darker gray somewhere around there. And now I'm going to make a node for my specular and my roughness in which I'm just going to hold one on my keyboard, left click, and that's just going to bring me a value node in which I'm going to drag it under specular. I'm going to drag it under roughness. And now this is going to make it pretty dull. So I'm just going to click on save here and then I'm going to drag this onto my background. So I'm going to exit this out and then I'm going to left click, drag it onto my background. And now you can see it's already looking really good inside of my viewport there. So if I click play or actually I just drag it through, you can see this is looking nice and elegant there inside of my camera. Now, the one thing I do want to add in here that we didn't have in Ridge Shift is actually volumetric fog, which gives it an extra particular look and it's going to make it look more photo real. So in order to do that, I'm actually going to come back here to my plus symbol, come down here to visual effects and then come down here to exponential height fog. I'm going to left click on this and actually let me look through my camera so we can see what it's going to do here. So I'm going to go back to my camera and I'm going to click on this to look through it and then go back to my exponential height fog. And then I'm going to look for volumetric fog down here under my details panel. So if I drag down all the way down here to about the middle where I see volumetric fog, I'm going to turn this on in which we can see a hint of what it did. But if I really want to exaggerate it, I'm going to come back here to the top where we have fog density. I'm actually going to make this one just so we can really see what's happening. So you can see we have real time fog inside of our viewport here which a lot of DCCs can't even handle. So this is cool that we're getting this real time inside of our viewport, but I'm gonna pull it back a little bit, maybe to like 0.1, but I just wanted to show you guys how the volumetric fog actually works real time within our viewport here. So far, just to recap, what we did was we brought our Limbic class simulation into Unreal Engine, and then we also took our camera animation and the cylinder animation from Cinema 4D into Unreal Engine, and then we did all of our lighting with real-time lights inside of Unreal Engine. Now, with a little bit of tinkering with the lighting and everything, I want to show you guys the final results of what I came up with for this project file. Now, I didn't want to bore you guys with all the art direction and tinkering that I was doing to achieve this, but this is the final result that I got here using the same methods that I just showed you guys. So I have all the materials that I brought over from Mega Scans. I have the lighting positions from Cinema 4D and everything is just playing back here inside of real time. I'll give you complete access to this file so you guys can go ahead and backward engineer it. And then I also do a bonus tutorial where I dive deeper into this. If you actually get my course on School of Motion, but let me show you guys the real time rendering here. So with the original file, we were actually getting around one minute per frame and that was rendering out HD. But I'm going to show you guys how we can render this out in 4K in about 60 seconds. So now that I have my project file all set up here, I'm going to come down here to my clipboard. I'm going to left click on this. Then I'm going to come here and I'm just going to set this up. So I'm going to click on JPEG here. I'm not going to do a sequence. I'm actually going to export this out as Apple ProRes. I'm just going to do 422HQ. And then I will also come down here to Game Rides Overrides because right here under Cinematic Quality Settings, if you turn this on, it's going to give you the highest quality settings for when you render it out. And then down here under Output, I'm just going to actually name this one Cloth Sim. So right here where it says Sequence Name, I'm just going to actually change this here. Actually, I'm just going to do Cloth. And then Output Resolution instead of HD. I told you guys I was going to do 4K. So I'm going to multiply this by 2. 3840 by 2160. Then I'm going to leave everything else as is 24 frames per second. Then I'm going to click accept. And then right here, this is what everybody always loves to see right here where it says render local. I'm going to left click on this and I'm just going to let this render out. Now you can see we're getting started here. Everything is rendering out in real time. If you look down here under estimated time remaining, we have about, it said a little bit over a minute, but it's going actually pretty fast. So again, this is just estimating, but you can see everything is running back really smoothly. And we did this at 24 frames per second at 4K and you see how fast it's rendering out. So basically in a minute, we're able to render out the entire duration, 240 frames, at 4K, 24 frames per second, when we use the offline render, it was taking about a minute per frame at HD.
Now, this is what the final result looks like. It's nice and elegant. Again, this is at 4K, 24 frames per second. You can see how smooth everything is, and it looked pretty photo real. And this is using lumen and ray tracing, so this is looking really good. Now, if I take this still and I compare it side by side with the render that EJ did, on the left-hand side, you can see the one that I did inside of Unreal Engine. On the right-hand side, you can see the one that EJ has set up using Redshift out of Cinema 4D. You can see that I took the liberties to do a little bit of my own color and get my own flavor to it on the Unreal one. But if you would put these up side by side, you couldn't tell me which one was Unreal and which one was Redshift, and they both look pretty good. Now in this short video, you can see the power of Unreal Engine and how us as 3D and motion graphics artists, how we can utilize this power for what we do. And if you're interested in taking it one step further, make sure you check out my course here on School of Motion, where I take you from complete beginner all the way to a pro and everything is project based. So at the end of each chapter, you're gonna have stuff like this that you can actually show off and put in your profile. You can put it on your resume and you just have something tangible at the end of the day. So if you like content like this make sure you sound off in the comments down below let school of motion know you want to see some more unreal content and also if you can visit me on youtube.com slash jonathan winbush i give a lot of tips and tricks on there as well and until next time stay fresh keep creating and i'll catch you guys in my unreal engine course i see you next time take care